Hey man, nice Volvo, is that turbocharged? What's up guys, it's Drifts and Lifts here. All right, so today's episode, I figured I would uh, carry the GoPro around with me and kind of film everything I'm doing today. A little bit of update for the channel, guys. Um, got Larry, the wagon in the garage here right now. So as you can see, we almost have the motor out. Um, just last night, I was basically disconnecting everything. So just prepping it to put this motor in, sitting right here. So this motor is from Oliver's car, my roommate. Um, he had a wagon that he did a slight build on and he crashed it at a drift event. Uh, he since then got another uh, 940 with a B230 FT squirter motor in it. So uh, he decided he would let go of his spare B230 FT squirter motor and give it to me for a really good price. So what we're gonna be doing guys is, uh, as you guys know, this motor in here, this is an 89. Uh, this car is an 89, this is the original motor from it. It has uh, a rod shooting through the block right now, it's got a big hole in the block. So what I'm gonna be doing guys is today, I'm gonna be doing a bit of running around and uh, I'm gonna hop in the Cummins, gonna head over to my friend Kyle's house and uh, he's gonna lend me his engine hoist because I don't have an engine hoist. Um, not enough room in this garage to really store one. It's already pretty tight in here. So uh, Kyle actually picked up a 940 himself. So and if you guys have been watching the channel a long time, um, you'll remember Kyle, he had like that first gen gray Cummins that we filmed a little bit of. So he's since then picked up a 940 turbo wagon. Gonna go check out his car and grab the hoist from him. Um, we're gonna hop in the Cummins. Uh, maybe I'll do a little cold start of that because it's actually pretty cold right now. And uh, then we're gonna head over to Post Haste Performance and uh, hopefully grab an engine stand because I want to kind of freshen this motor up before I put it in this car. Um, also guys, the panel wagon, you're probably all wondering what's the deal with the panel wagon. Um, I'm actually just waiting on a center support bearing. So, so what I did is I got the M90 front half of the drive shaft that Dennis Blom sent me in the crate of stuff from Sweden. Um, and I took it to a driveline shop and I'm getting them to balance it with a rear shaft. So I had another one of these, I brought it to them. Um, unfortunately, they said they could get a center support bearing for me. Um, I just, I was like, okay, no worries, you guys can get that done. And uh, they called me back and uh, the price from their supplier was like absurd. Um, I thought it was gonna be like 40 bucks or whatever, but they wanted like 160. Um, so I looked on Rock Auto and they did have center support bearings on there. Should have just bought one from there originally, but uh, I, you know, they, they said they could get me one, but um, it is what it is. So we're just waiting on that. We got a couple days, I think, till the Rock Auto order comes in. Then I'm gonna drive to Langley, uh, actually Surrey in BC here and uh, drop it off at Pat's Driveline. Shout out to Pat's Driveline. They're gonna balance that for me and put the new center support bearing as well as the center support bearing mount. Um, and then that is pretty much all the final pieces for the panel wagon. Um, and then I'll be over at Post Haste installing the ZF transmission with our new six putt clutch and that kind of stuff. But for today, we're gonna work on uh, Larry the wagon here. So since this motor is really high kilometers, guys, I'm pretty sure it was around 400,000 kilometers. I'm gonna be doing like a bit of a freshen up on it. So I have a bunch of parts sitting, you see all these boxes, they're all like Rock Auto random Volvo parts. We got rod bolts, rod bearings, um, you know, gaskets, every kind of gasket we need. So what I'm gonna be doing, I think, is I'll pull off the oil pan and we're gonna change some rod bearings in it. Um, just to freshen it up, kinda, you know, who knows what the, uh, what the rod bearings look like. And I figured, you know, we're gonna have it on an engine stand. We may as well really freshen this thing up. I'm gonna take the head off, um, put a new head gasket on it because this motor actually, when it was in Oliver's wagon, um, it was making a bit of a weird sound in the top end that we really couldn't pinpoint what, what it was. So I'm just gonna take it apart and just make sure everything's good. Another thing I wanna do is uh, put a new, put new oil pump O-rings in it uh, because over time they get really crusty and cracked and eventually you can actually start losing oil pressure there. Um, and you know, you could ruin a good motor that way. So I'm gonna pull it out, inspect the oil pump and uh, we're gonna put some new oil pump O-rings as well as rod bearings in it. So um, that's kind of the plan for today, guys. So I'm just gonna take you with me and uh, we're gonna go on a little journey, a little adventure and kind of go run some errands. All right, guys, let's give the Cummins a little cold start. So before I head out here, I just want to let you guys know that uh, we still have merch for sale. Um, there's a limited supply, so if you want one, I'll get one soon because uh, there's like 40 hoodies left or something like that. Um, but we got our epic Volvo Drift hoodie, drifts and lifts. Um, we also got our got red block tukes. 
So uh, you can get those at the Drifts and Lifts store. The link to the store is in the description of this video. Um, also guys, I had stickers up on the site and I still do. Um, and uh, I realized that the shipping cost for one sticker is a bit ridiculous. So now what we're doing is a seven sticker sticker pack. Um, and then uh, you're gonna pay the ridiculous shipping amount because it's just flat rate shipping. And uh, you're gonna get seven stickers for the price of like one essentially. So um, yeah, sorry about that. Anybody who bought one sticker for 25 bucks, I threw some extra stickers in your pack um, just so you weren't buying like one sticker for 25 bucks, it'd be ridiculous. Um, so yeah, but I figured I'd let you guys know that. So if you want some merch, get it before it's gone because uh, once we sell all these, we're not gonna be getting these designs in again. We're gonna switch to something different and uh, you know, be doing it that way. So if you guys wanna support the channel, cop a hoodie, cop a toque and some stickers and uh, yeah, appreciate you guys. Alrighty guys, so I just arrived at my good friend uh, Kyle Best here. So if you guys remember Kyle, um, he had his uh, first gen Cummins over there. We'll take a little look at that, but uh, so I guess you picked up this 940 for a winter beater, eh Kyle? Yeah, I just grabbed it. Sick, so uh, it's a 94 or what, what 94, kind of? 94 I think, yeah. Sick, yeah, so looking at it, um, it's cool it doesn't have a sunroof. This is a non-sunroof model. Oh, exactly. So like yeah. almost almost all of them had sunroofs, but like in 94, you could get the option without a sunroof. So it's kind of dope because it's more like the stripper package of it, right? Nice. Yeah, nice. a little bit lighter up top. Yeah. But uh, so it looks like a pretty solid car, guys. Um, it's got the 740 front end. So guys from Europe, you'll probably be like, why does this 940 have a 740 front end? But um, this was something we had in North America, 740 front end on a 940, only on 1994 and 95, I believe. So how many kilometers does this thing got? 240 it's pretty low yeah, it's yeah pretty it's not bad like it looks pretty fresh pretty fresh car um squirter engine green wagon pretty sick interesting got some like paint oh uh, weird eh you don't really see that too often yeah there's a bunch of spots like that kind of like i wonder what happened to it so kyle's thinking of doing a bit of like a build on this car so something you know mild maybe in the 200 to 300 horsepower range I mean, he's not too sure like what he wants to go for budget and that kind of thing because that definitely will determine what the end goal will be but uh it's looking like right now um it's got an automatic so you can kind of you know the max you can really do for horsepower on an automatic is like 300 to 350 but that would be pretty sweet though even 300 to 350 I'd would be, be pretty pretty rowdy yeah. yeah considering like this is like a, actually a stock turbo volvo on a dyno makes like 125 to the wheel that's it yeah, yeah that's all <laughs> that's yeah, yeah yeah so like triple the power like definitely feels pretty good hell yeah but uh yo let's check out your truck man i haven't seen this thing so if you guys remember it was like a couple years ago now almost and probably like a couple years ago yeah, um ago. when i had my first gen coming so the red truck kyle actually uh had this truck but it was also a two-wheel drive yeah so uh you did like the full freaking full four by four swap on this two-wheel drive frame i guess eh? i had the frame down to bare nothing man i saw like pictures of it, it was just insane yeah, like you yeah. had it completely, completely apart, apart yeah, yeah completely. like every nut and bolt was like taken apart yeah you got the drive front drive shaft off right now yeah front and rear drive shaft they both broke oh really yeah four by four and yeah oh really <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah i, I gotta fix the angle on the the, oh, on the, on the U joints and stuff, yeah, yeah, yeah. there's like too, too much, much angle. Too much yeah, just pop the U joints, or yeah, pop the U joints. Yeah, yeah, yeah fair enough. But yeah, this truck's pretty cool. It's uh, obviously we can't pop the hood for you guys right now, but um, still same motor setup as before, hey? Yeah, all the same. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it has a 62 millimeter Borg Warner turbo on it. It's got this uh, third gen intercooler, which seems like for an off road truck, it's almost a little sketchy now. Yeah, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna maybe cut, cut off the bottom and get it take welded up. And yeah, put a yeah. On it. Maybe put a bumper on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah sweet. But um, this thing looks burly though. Once uh, once you get this together, we'll have to go for a rip in it. Yeah, film, for a sure. little, film a little episode. I saw like a video of you going through the mud hole in this. It was pretty sweet. Yeah. Yeah. It's cool.
This truck was pretty quick. I think you ran like, a, what do you say, a 13.9 at Mission in it? Yeah, 13.7. That, that's pretty good, yeah. man. So um, when it was a two-wheel drive, he brought it to the drag strip. It ran like a 13.7 um, with a Getrag manual transmission. So that's even more impressive because obviously, you know, manual is a lot harder to shift down the track. But yeah, pretty sick. So um, all right, guys, I'm going to grab, I'm going to borrow the engine hoist from uh, Kyle here. And... We're gonna head over to post taste and we're going to uh, grab an engine stand and then we can pff, do some engine rebuilding stuff. Pretty smooth running red block, I would say. The thing about the 94 plus or any sporter motor, generally in the 90s, is that uh, they don't really get piston slot because of the oil sporters. So almost every time that you get one of these cars, the, the engine's really quiet and it usually sounds really nice. Whereas the 80s cars, they'll have some piston flop and shit. Alrighty guys, so we just arrived at Post Haste Performance here in Chilliwack, BC. So uh, if you guys don't, don't already know, um, if you're new to the channel, this is the main tuning shop that I go to for all of my stuff. Uh, one of the main sponsors of the channel. What we're doing right now, guys, is... Uh, well, I figured I'd check out the panel wagon right now. Um, it's kind of sitting under a complete sheet of ice. So what we had is like, oh, look at this. This is so weird. Look at that. Oh my God. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so we had like a lot of snow and then the next day it rained and then overnight that night it froze um, and then it's snowing again. So we literally had like a sheet of ice on everything. As you can see, this thing's so interesting. Um, so yeah, the panel wagon's going to be hanging out here until we can get like I said, a couple more parts. We're just waiting on that drive shaft center support bank. Um, so I'm gonna grab a uh, engine stand from uh, Dan and Helen here at Post Haste right now. But something I wanted to talk to you guys about, um, really exciting. So, you know, the whole time um, I've been going to this, this tuning shop, Dan and Helen have had a YouTube channel, but they usually just feature kind of um, really basic stuff, uh, more like some, you know, videos of dyno poles and that kind of thing. They didn't really dive into any of the details of, you know, the shop and some really cool stuff that they get to do here. So what we're doing guys is we're actually going to be starting a post haste performance YouTube channel. Um, you know, there's so much cool projects and cars that come in and out of the shop, um, that I figured there's a lot of info that, and you know, lots of fun stuff we could be filming, um, that would be really interesting for you guys. So. I have the link to the Post Haste Performance YouTube channel in the description of this video right now. So head over there and uh, hit that subscribe button because um, in the next while here, we're going to be starting to film some stuff here at Post Haste. We're gonna try to do like one video a week and uh, just kind of everything that we do here. So, um, you know, they, they have an engine dyno. So uh, we're gonna be doing some cool like um, testing on the engine dyno, different turbo setups and this and that. And uh, basically whenever there is a cool project um, here at Post Haste that they are tuning or, you know, doing work on. Um, this is the engine dyno bay in this uh, box here. So I'll just show it to you guys real quick. Oh, never mind. It's locked up right now. So, you know, when we have some spare time, uh, we can get an engine on here and do some cool test and tune videos. Like uh, we can try, you know, this turbocharger versus this turbo, or maybe like, a, you know, a ported intake manifold or see what exhaust manifold works better on a Volvo or whatever. There's just a lot of cool stuff that happens at this shop that I really think that you guys would enjoy seeing. Um, so yeah, head to the Post Haste YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button and uh, stay tuned for some cool stuff to be coming soon. So this is actually our friend Cedric's car. So uh, Cedric, uh, he's had this car for a long time. Um, it's been years now, but he actually just recently got the motor built here at Post Haste. Uh, I forget what's done to it. I think it has a forged bottom end. I guess 1Js already have that from the factory, but did, uh, hey Dan, did Cedric do aftermarket rods in this thing? Aftermarket rods. Aftermarket rods, aftermarket pistons. So this is pretty much a built 1JZ. Um, they actually dyno tuned this engine on the engine dyno, uh, and then they stuffed it in the car here. So uh, this car is pretty pretty serious. I think it made um, on ethanol. It's like a it's pretty much a 450 500 horsepower engine. All right, guys. So this is Sun Beer, um, one of the main mechanics and do it all guys here at Post Ace. So uh, what do we got going on in this 240? I guess it's a 240 or is it a 180? Oh, yeah, the 240 SX. What's the deal with this uh, with this engine here? Uh, it's got a built SR20 in it. Oh, we're just doing a max full standalone ECU and wiring harness. Yep. Uh, did some more recoils. 
Full fuel system, E85. Yeah. What kind of turbo is this thing got at? HKS. Oh yeah, it's like a special fancy turbo. Yeah. Yeah. So it's going ethanol and yeah, uh 1500 cc injectors. It's pretty big injectors. Custom fuel rail here, aftermarket radium. It's pretty high quality stuff. Um, it's funny how small the uh, the intercooler pipe yeah, is on there. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. So we got the fuel injector tester and cleaner here uh, at Post Taste, and I've actually fuel tested injectors on this many times. Um, really nice thing to have. Uh, any tuning shop should have one of these because uh, if you have a crappy set of injectors and you try to tune a car with it you are gonna have a bad time. Likely you're gonna blow up your engine, you can lean it out, um, it can get really sketchy. So this is really good before you put you know, new injectors in a build, you always want to test them with a tester and cleaner. Um, if you look over here, this is actually my 2.5 crankshaft from the Penta motor. Um, I know you guys have been waiting for years almost at this point for uh, me to build an NA motor. And we're actually just kind of hung up on the piston side of things. So. Um, the pistons that we had for this block are too small. Um, if we're going to do it, we want to do it right. We don't want to be putting like, you know, pistons with a ton of slop in them. Um, too small for the bores. And we are going to be boring this block out. Uh, so what we're going to be doing is going to a silver light piston from like a Mercury. Um, they have them on Summit Racing. Dennis Blom informed me that they're very close. They're a 96.8 millimeter bore. Uh, and uh, a stock Volvo bore is 96 millimeter. So we're gonna bore it out to 96.8 and hopefully run those pistons. We're just having a hard time finding rings for them right now, um, but that'll be kind of, you know, next on the list, so. All right, so here's the dyno room. You guys have seen this room many times on my videos. So they got a Eclipse on the dyno right now. This is a front wheel drive, um, pretty serious motor build. It's got a precision turbo. I wanna say a 62 millimeter or something like that. Um, you know, aftermarket manifold. Uh, I think this thing's fully built bottom end. You know, it's got this aftermarket intake, uh, full E85 from what I, what I know. Uh, I think they're shooting for something like 500 horsepower. Should be pretty cool. So we got our engine stand. We're gonna head back home. We got our engine hoist from Kyle.